Hi, my name is Staff Sergeant Jacob Kraft. I'm the bass room player for the Army Blues, part of the United States Army Band stationed in Fort Myer, Virginia. Uh, today I'm going to go through just a couple exercises I do to work on low playing for bass room. These are things I do pretty much every day just to solidify the foundation just so I can work from there. Um, and they're things I did when I was a younger player too to sort of work on my fundamentals. Um, in regards to low playing, I think a lot of younger students have a have trouble getting in the correct mindset of how to approach it. Um, it. Playing in the extreme low register is not something most younger players come across in most of their band literature, orchestral literature, marching band literature, whatever it is. So it's something that they don't necessarily practice on a daily basis, if at all. Um, so I think it's important to add it as another part of your practice routine, because just Shoring up your fundamentals in a different part of the horn is just going to make everything better overall. Um, so some pitfalls I see younger students fall into is they're trying to get as big, dark sound in the low register. And to do that, they're making their amateur, their lips, um, extremely wide. And that usually results in a big, fuzzy, unfocused tone. Um, let me see if I can do it. Something like that. Um, my amateur was too big, so I was actually leaking air out of the corners of my mouth, where those should be nice and tight, creating a nice seal, so all of the buzzing is going into the trombone and giving you a, the best sound you can get. Um, so, with all that said, um, one of the first things I do every day is play scales, and I like to play them nice, slurred, even glissando, just to work on getting my air to be consistent, make sure that all the notes are consistent as I'm playing them, all my valve slurs are working, and they're nice and clean. Um, so I'll give you an example of that. This is just a B-flat scale. something I'll do and I'll take it down to a whole nother octave down, down to the B flat. And when I mean take it down, I mean take it down chromatically. So do a B flat scale and then an A scale and then an A flat scale. So this also lets you work on your scales. You be listening for intonation, make sure the notes are coming out consistently, and it makes you see the harder notes to slur in between. Like in that scale, going from B flat, which is an open pedal note, to C, which is both valves and in essentially fourth position, it's a big shift for your amateur. It, it's a, it's got a lot of different feedback. So you have to work on how to make those sound similar, even though they might not necessarily feel similar, at least at first. Um, so that's one of the first things I do, and that's very important to me. Um, one of the second things I do is there's a very famous trombone exercise that works on lip slurs and going through the different partials that it sounds like this. So that's all in first position and usually people take it down, do it in second position, in third position, fourth position, and so on all the way up. Um, that's an exercise I like to do down an octave, so that's when you start to work through the different valve combinations and get your um, valve coordination together. So down an octave, I'll do it a little bit slower, and I recommend these, doing these slower first to make sure everything is super clean. And I was glissing that kind of to mimic up uh, the octave above where I wasn't tonguing anything, just trying to go through the different um, partials. And as you get more advanced with it, you can speed it up a little bit, but speed's not important here. It's not why you're doing the exercise, so don't really worry about it. Um, and I like to take that down as well to, to maybe in the key of F, or you can go lower if you want and you think you're being productive and you're doing it right, and be honest with yourself. Um, that's something we all have to do. Record yourself, listen back to it, and make sure you everything sounds as good as you want it to be, as you think it sounds. Um, and one of the last things I want to cover, I think it's important for younger students, 
who don't play in their, this register all the time, to think of it just like anything else. It's something, it's, it's part of your instrument. It's just another range. It's another sound. Um, so play music down there and play it musically. So a, a very famous trombone book is the Rochu book, and it's a series of vocal etudes, um, and every trombone player should have it. I'm sure you can find it on Amazon or at your local music store. Um, it's this, and it teaches trombone players to play musically, melodically, um, and and um, most people like to play it in the octave it's written, and then to play maybe down an octave to work on a different um, a different set of pitches of different register. Um, I think it's important to even take it down one more octave and do it in two octaves, so that you're playing musically in this lower register that isn't necessarily something you do a lot. So I'll give you uh, an example of that. This being a Rochu number thirteen. There's a couple things I want to go back and fix, which is great. You want to hear those things and go back and practice them later. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, appreciate it. Stay safe and healthy out there.